Good morning. How's everyone doing today? You are a sharp looking crowd of people. He owes me 20 bucks for saying that. Is that what that was the deal, right? No, you all, thank you so much. I'm very honored to be back here. Uh, I was here in, um, I think it was July of last year. Is that right? And uh, Miss White, it's good to see you. I hear this is your third Sunday back. Good, good to see you. You're, you're quite an encouragement. Amen. I appreciate that. And wow, what some music, right? Appreciate you guys and uh, the choir and the musicians and uh, and happy anniversary to you all and all the hard work that you've put into this day and to this church and to this ministry. You can really tell the Lord is here. God is here today. The Holy Spirit is with us. You know, as I was sitting here and looking around, a few things that I missed the first time I was here. I really like that sign on the back. Has anybody ever paid attention to it when you walk out? Without turning around, what does it say? Depart to serve. You know what the back of your bulletin says the motto of this church is? Moving forward, building God's kingdom. That's what we're called to do, right? That's what we've been singing about. What's our journey like? What's it going to be like when we get home? But what are we going to be like while we're here? You know, the good thing about being a guest preacher is I can offend people when I get to go home. <laughs> but if you get offended today by what I say, you won't be offended with me, really. Do you know who you'll be offended with? With God. That's a struggle in my life, and I'm sure it's a struggle in yours. I want to blame everything on everyone else. I want to blame it on the circumstances or the situations or whatever's going on. Down deep, you know what I know what the real problem is? Me. You know what's wrong with me? My heart's not right with God. It's a struggle, right? So what I want to talk with you about today is from Matthew 25, 14 through 20 through 30. The parable of the talents. Who's heard that story before? Everyone's heard that, right? But I want to read it, and then I want to go through a few points, and I'll get you out by about 2 o'clock today. <laughs> Isn't that right? I got two and a half hours? Is that... No, I go to a good little Baptist church. If we get out at 12.01, everybody's mad, so I'll have you out of here uh, on time. Let's read Matthew 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto, him, unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so that he hath received five talents came, brought, came and brought another five talents, saying, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained another two, two another talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee, thou art an and, thou art and hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast thine that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest 
that I reap where I sowed not and gathered where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall hath abundance. But from him that hath not give, not, that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity today. Yes. Lord, thank you for this congregation. Thank you for the people that are in this congregation. Yes. Thank you for the stewards and the stewardess, Lord. Thank you for their dedication, for their wisdom, and Lord, for what you're doing in their lives. Lord, I pray for each and every individual here that is hurting, that is bitter, frustrated. And Lord, at times, just like myself, they don't even know where they are with you or where you are. And Lord, they struggle to know what you want them to do with their lives. Lord, I just pray that you will use this time, that you will use the words that I say, that you will use me, Lord, to deliver something to someone. If it's just one person in this building that needs to hear it, Lord, let their ears be open, let their heart be open, let their mind be open. In your heavenly name, amen. Amen. So we've all heard this story before, right? Amen. And it has great meaning to it. But I, what I want to talk about it today is from the steward side, the stewardess side. What are you doing with it? First, what is a talent? A talent is something that you do not have on your own. It's something you're born with. And if you're born with it, who gave it to you? God gave it to you. God gave it to me. So when you're reading this and they're talking about talents or bags of gold, what is this really saying here? This is saying this is what God has given to these people. The master is God. The master is the Lord. The one who created the heavens and the earth. When you read Ephesians 2.10, it says all talents are from God. 1 Corinthians 12, 5 through 6 says that everyone has their own unique and different talents. So my, my talent might not be the same as your talent. Amen. That's okay. Do you know why? Because the scripture says they're all from God. Amen. 1 Peter 4, 10 through 7 says use the talents God has given you. You ever heard that little song, This Little Light of Mine? It's a kid's song, right? It has a lot of good meaning. Are you using the talents God has given you? Are you doing the things God has called you to do? If you're in the midst of the storm and life is not going the way you want it to go, There's two things you can think about in that. Are you Job? Is the storm in your life something that you can't avoid? It's just life. You didn't decide to go there. It just happened. But if you're in a storm and you're Jonah, you put yourself there. I put myself there. I try not to anymore. Still a sinner saved by the grace of God. Yeah. Saved by the grace of God. Yeah. Amen. The blood of Jesus covers every sin that I will commit. Yeah. He has forgiven me for that. Amen. But I still struggle with things in my life. Is there anybody in here who doesn't have struggles? Yeah. Anybody in here that's perfect? No. 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 But your struggle might be different than my struggle. Amen. The person sitting beside you, their struggle might be different than your struggle. Should you talk about them or should you pray for them? But what do we normally do? And normally in the form of a prayer request, right? Did you hear about sister? Did you hear about brother Tabor, what he's going through?
What's your talents? Listening? See, when we first think about talents, what do we automatically assume? Money. We immediately go to, wait, God, hold up. This is my money. I need it. I can't be giving it to, to the church. I can't be giving it to others because I got bills I got to pay. Been there, done that. That storm is not fun. Is your talent listening, giving, leadership, volunteering, service? God has a talent for everyone in this room. Something that he has given to us. But here's the first thing we have to overcome. And this is what the parable of talents here is. Who owns them? Are you an owner of your talents? Or are you a steward of your talents? For a long time, I was, I and still at times struggle with wanting to own the things that I have and use them for my betterment. Use them for my pride or my ego. When you look at in here in the scriptures, in Psalms 24, 1, it says the earth is the Lord's. There's no but after that. There's no or. There's no, no maybe. It says the earth is the Lord's. What's the earth? Everything. Everything in this world belongs to God. But we're in a society today that depends on who you listen to or what you turn on or what's going on. Do it for yourself. You're defined by material things. Where you live, what you wear, what you drive. Do you think God cares about what we drive if we're not serving Him? Do you think how He cares how pretty we look if we get to church with a bad attitude? Seriously. you think He cares if we got our hair done or our nails? I don't get my nails done. So I'm, uh... Do you think He cares? What does He care about? What we are doing for the kingdom. Depart to serve. Build the kingdom. Do you know what the difference is between an owner and a steward? An owner has possession of. It's yours. No one else can have it. Unless you give it to them. A steward is someone that is given something of great value. And has the responsibility to take it. Care of it. But see, when we use the word steward sometimes in our society today, that's like the low of the low, right? That's like, oh, well, I don't want to be down here at the bottom. Do you think God looks at you as being at the bottom if you're a steward of what he's given you? So we really have to deal with what this, what society says is right versus what God says is right. It's a big difference. It's a struggle in my life. It's a str- Everyone in here has that struggle. Do you own your time? No. Do you own your money? No. Do you struggle to let go of it? Yes. Do you struggle to give God your time? Yes. I know every day if I'll read my Bible... And spend time praying and focusing on God, that I will have a better day. No matter what goes on in my life. But you know what I struggle every day to do? To read the Bible, to pray. Is that your struggle? If you're in the storm and you want out of the storm, turn back to God. Don't, don't, don't say, God, where are you? God's right behind you. God's not moved. Do you know, and it's off topic now, do you know the word truth in the Bible? Do you know what it means? What the Hebrew and Greek of the word truth? Unchanging. Perfect. 100% accurate. Do you know what truth in our society today means? It's true until proven otherwise. Is God's word the truth? 
or is it the truth by our society's definition? God's word is unchanging. Right? So owners have rights. Stewards and stewardess have responsibilities. Are you being responsible with the talents that God has given you? Or are you just owning them? Doing them for your own glory or his glory. The second is responsibility. If you're given something, have you, well, let me ask you this. Have you ever given something to someone who borrowed it and they either never gave it back or when it came back, you're like, excuse me? This is not how I, when I lent you my lawnmower, it didn't have dents in it. When I let you borrow that money and you never gave it back, it wasn't a gift, it was a loan. Yeah. The definition of responsibility is the state of having a duty to deal with. It's something that you have control over. Responsibility. The master gave these three individuals the responsibility of holding on to what he had given them. God gives us these talents. God gives us the responsibility. Let me ask you this. Because sometimes God's word, we say, okay, well, this is, this is a parable. You know, how does this really apply to my life? If you had the cure to cancer, if you knew how to cure cancer and you were so selfish that you wouldn't tell anybody else about it, because you wanted to keep it for yourself. What would you say about that person? Wouldn't be a very good person, would they? Do you know that you have the cure to hell? Do you know that everyone in here has the ability to introduce people to Jesus Christ? to give them the gospel. What better way to give someone the gospel than by your actions? Because if you say you're a Christian and you don't act like one, are you leading them closer to Christ or further away from Christ? See, I was one of those Christians for a long time that people would look at and say, well, if that's a Christian, no thanks. Are you there right now? Try not to look, you know, particularly just at one person because I don't want to you know, make you feel guilty. But are you? Are you guys even behind me and gals? What would people say if I went and talked to ten people and said, what do you think about and plugged your name in? What would they say? Would they say forgiving and kind and listens and gives or would they say bitter, ugly, rude? What would they say? Responsibilities. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I see a lot of young kids in here. It's very encouraging. You go to a lot of churches today, and I call them the little Q-tips. You know what little Q-tips are, right? Little old men and women with gray hair. But you go to a lot of churches today and there are no young people. This is a responsibility. This book is full of responsibilities. But with responsibilities comes rewards, right? The principle of accountability. The master held these three individuals accountable for their actions. Right? Do you know what accountability means? The fact or condition of accepting your role. You ever seen a little two-year-old who has chocolate all over their mouth and cookie crumbs and you say, Hey, Nathan, did you eat that cookie? Mm -mm. <laughs> they got chocolate on their fingers. 
Do we try to do that to God? Hey, did you do that? Mm -hmm. Not me. It's Ben's fault. Hey, it's easier to blame someone else than to take responsibility, right? To be accountable for your actions. What does Romans 14, 11 say? Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. And you'll give an account for some actions or every action. Every action. So if you don't want to be accountable here on the earth, guess what? Good news or bad news, depending on how you want to look at it. You're going to give an account for every action. I'm going to give an account for every action. You look at the story of Jonah. You look at the story of my life. How many people did I miss the chance to witness to because I had a poor attitude? How many people did I not show the love of Christ to because I was bitter? Now, will I be held accountable if someone doesn't accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior? I don't think so. But if my actions lead someone to not consider getting right with God or accepting Jesus as their personal Savior, I think I have a small play in that, and I think I will be held accountable for that. Because Romans says, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Is this truth? So when you get in front of the master, when you're standing before God, he's going to say one of two things. What does the master here say? One, he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Faithful here means when you're given a task, when you're given a talent, you go and do it. You take that talent that you have and you go build the kingdom of God. What does he say to the other one? You wicked, lazy servant. The principle of reward. The master looked at every one of these stewards and measured what they had done. This is not about money. I don't think, you know, give God a dollar, he's going to give you seven. I think this is give God your life and he'll give you the joy that he defines in James. It's already there. It's not, I'm back up on that. It's not even that God's going to give it to you. It's already there. The, all the grace and all the mercy and all the joy and all the blessings and everything that you need in your life is already setting right there. God has given it to us. So it's not that, oh, I've got to do all this so I can, you know, get in God's favor and maybe he'll do this. No, God's already said what he's going to do. So the master do, does the reward here. And here's the challenge that comes in on this. Our human side, our flesh. But Nathan, I don't want to do that. I don't like to do that. It's embarrassing. If I'm out at a restaurant and I feel like I need to say something to someone about their salvation or where are they going or are they having a bad day, what if they say something rude back What does Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says? Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. If you have a talent, work at it with all your heart. Is being a Christian easy? No. Especially in our society today. Is being a man of God an easy thing to do? No. Is being a woman of God an easy thing to do? No. Is being a child of God an easy thing to do? No. If being a Christian were an easy thing and all you had to do was sign up and say, I believe in Jesus Christ and your life was perfect, we'd have 100% Christianity across the world. Right? 
So what's unique about being a Christian is that when you're going through those storms that aren't caused by your own actions, God's there for you. Amen. So the faithful stewards, they do what God has asked them to do. And he multiplies. Again, not money. If you're in your... Take Ben. Ben's a singer. Wonderful singer. If he doesn't sing for two years and he, he tries to sing, is he going to come out of the gate with a you know beautiful voice like he has? Or does he need to practice that? Practice. When you start out witnessing to somebody, are you going to be the Billy Graham of Hemingway, South Carolina? No. Can you be the Billy Graham? Absolutely. Read his biography. Do you know what he used to do? He used to go out in the woods for three, four, five, six hours a day and preach to the trees. Why? Because he wanted to get better at it. Amen. Are you going to start out being a prayer warrior? No. But if you don't start out praying, can you ever be a prayer warrior? No. So what's God going to say to you? What's holding you back? Every single person in this church today has a talent that God has given you. He's put a calling on your life. He's put a purpose in your life. And if you're going on that route, praise the Lord, stay on it. Get on your knees every day, multiple times a day, and stay on that path. Because if you are, Satan's going to try to knock you off of it. Amen. If you're not on that path, what is it? Embarrassment? Stubbornness? It's part mine. I think that's part of everybody's. Pride? Ego? You're going to be worried about what others have to say? Let me give you a little hint, a little insight into this. If you're not right with God and you think you've, you are fooling other people, nope. If you're not right with God, people can see it on your face. They can hear it in the tone of your voice. They can see it in your actions. They saw it in mine. I thought for years I had my wife fooled. And when I finally walked into our bedroom and said, baby, I'm, I'm sorry for not being the man of God I should have been. She was like, finally he admits it. She knew it. But she couldn't tell me because I was so bitter. I was so angry. I was so, it's everybody's fault. No, other people had done me wrong, sure. Life hadn't gone right at certain times, but a lot of the stuff I'd caused myself. So you really got to consider, what is it? What is holding you back? So if you don't mind, would you, you bow your heads with me? And close your eyes. This might be different from a normal service than what you all do. But I feel led of the Lord to do this. Amen. Is there anybody in here who doesn't know the Lord? If you died right now, before I finish this, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? Because if this is God's word and this is the truth and you believe it, there's no gray. There's no maybes. There's no buts. It's Jesus is coming back. Yes. You're either going up or you're going down. Yes. If you die, you're going yes. up or you're going down. Yes. So if there's anyone in here and you're not sure of it, you don't know for sure if you're saved. You need to get your heart right with God. Yes. You need to get saved. Yes. You need to say something similar to this. You know, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe you sent your son to die on the cross for me. Without you, without Jesus Christ, I would spend eternity in hell. So I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I want to receive you into my life as my personal Lord and Savior and accept you into my heart. I want my life to be dedicated to God, to Jesus Christ, to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be, for me to be the kind of person that you've created me to be. In Jesus' name. If you've prayed that prayer after the service, 
Get with your bishop. Get with a leader in this church. Get with a steward or a stewardess and say, can you sit down and show me in scriptures what I need to do next? If you're not sure, if you want, if you're ready to pray that prayer, come and see someone. If you are saved, if you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven, I want to ask you three questions. And I don't mean to offend in this. Because I've not been sent here to offend. I've been sent here to encourage. I've been spent, sent here to speak truth. Amen. I've been, but I've also been sent here to challenge. Yes. What talents has God given you? Everybody in here has a talent. Are you using those talents for the glory of God? Yes. If not... Why not? Those aren't complicated questions. We overcomplicate the scriptures. God's commands are really very simple. Accept me as your personal savior and obey me. So have you ever done this? you ever prayed really hard for God to do something? It gets done and you immediately take all the credit for it. Have you ever been in a situation or a challenging and you're like, God, help me out of this? And he does? Absolutely. Start giving God credit for that. Start giving God credit for the talents that he's put into your life. Start using those talents to serve him, to build the kingdom. What's going to matter in heaven? Title of your job? Bank account, car you drive. No. What's going to matter is what you did for him. What matters is what you do with your talents. So I want to encourage you all as a church here. If someone in here, if you have an issue or a problem, find one of these godly men or women to talk to. And when someone comes and talks to you, don't go talk to anyone else about it. Keep it in confidence. Right? If there's somebody in this church that you haven't talked to the person in years because you're mad at them, both of you need to get your heart right with God. Right? Because that's what the scriptures are about. How to live our lives. Thank you all so much for letting me come and be with you today. I appreciate you all so much.